Hi guys, it is the middle of July and my garden is in full harvest mode, but I still have a lot going on there and I would love to show you what my garden looks like this month. First, the blueberries. July is when my blueberries are really getting to be where they can be harvested. You can see them behind me on the bushes, but the truth is I've already harvested gallons and gallons of blueberries. I just can't keep up with them. I have people helping me with them. My favorite though are these, the pink lemonade blueberries. They are delicious. They are like candy. They are so good. This one right here, Brightwell, full harvest right now is just completely loaded. Absolutely love my blueberries. This is when they really, really do well. So now I'm going to take you into my main garden and I will tell you I haven't prepared this garden for you to look at. I'm sure there will be areas that are overgrown, diseased. Honestly, July is a time of year in the garden where you do struggle with insect pressure, disease, and all sorts of other things, but I'm just giving you a real look of what my garden looks like in July. There's a couple things that I want you to keep your eye out for as I show you this tour of my garden crop by crop. The first thing is, is I'm really intentional when it comes to succession planting. If there is something in my garden that has already harvested or nearing the end, then I'm putting something else in there. And you'll be able to see that in what I'm showing you today. But also if you go back to the garden tour episode I did in June, you'll notice that certain things are different. I have different crops in different areas. But first of all, I'm gonna show you what I've got over here on the far side of my garden, starting with my tomatoes. These have to be my best looking tomatoes that I have ever grown. I'm gonna show you on the other side here in just a minute, but on the other side, my tomatoes are growing in straw bales. And I also put my regular tomato cages on this side. I really think that as I conditioned my straw bales with nitrogen, I feel like that nitrogen just overflowed to the ones that are right beside them in the cages. So it benefited both the tomatoes that are growing in the straw bales and the tomatoes that are growing in the cages. I also decided to plant some zinnias or zinnias as I've always grown up to call them just to create a beautiful little flower area in the tomato part. This has got to be my very favorite part of my garden this year. It's just been absolutely incredible. So let's go take a closer look. Giving you a little bit closer of a look here. This first tomato here is Matt's Wild Cherry. And then I've got, I can't remember which varieties are which, but I think this one actually might be a black creme. I can't recall which one that might be black creme actually but you'll also notice here that I've got some cantaloupes that are growing and they were planted actually in the straw bales and they have just continued to climb over on this side and I'm trying to support the fruit as much as I can this particular variety here is Juliet this is an incredibly productive tomato plant in my hot summer garden I found that it really produces well in the heat and then We've got San Marzano. I haven't planted these in years because when I planted them my first season, they just didn't do all that well for me. But so far, even though they're harvesting later than the rest of my tomatoes, so far they're looking really good. So we'll see how they end up handling the heat. And then down here, you'll see a honeydew melon that I've got supported there until it completely gets ready to pick. I'm so excited about that. And then we have another honeydew melon right there. Super excited. And you can see these tomato plants are huge. They are the tallest tomato plants I've ever grown. I'm so excited about those. Okay, before we move on, this here, Amish paste. These have done really well for me. I have noticed that they're a little bit more susceptible to early blight than some of the other ones, but so far I've been able to get most of that disease off and it's been pretty good. Before we go around to the other part, the straw bale garden, I just wanted to show you here my asparagus. And this is my third or fourth year 
of asparagus. I harvested a lot before letting the ferns just completely grow up to continue to nourish the crown. You'll also notice some tomatoes in the fray. Those are Matt's wild cherry tomatoes that volunteered from my compost that I obviously didn't hot compost, but hey, I've got extra cherry tomatoes in there that are battling their way. Moving on over here, I've got an arch trellis that I've put over here for cucumbers. And these have done really well. They actually struggled for a little while, I think because that asparagus cast so much shade over there, but they have done really, really well. This is market more. I need to pick that because that's ready to pick, but I've already harvested so many of these cucumbers already. And I have a pickling one here. I think this is either Boston pickling or Chicago pickling. I can't ever get them straight. I can't remember, but so far the market more is doing really well. You'll also notice here in this bed that I've got peppers and this was where my garlic was the last time that we had one of these garden tours. What I did is I planted the peppers in between the garlic right about a month before I harvested the garlic. And then after I harvested the garlic, the peppers were able to take over. I have some like snacking peppers. I can't remember if these are yum yum peppers or the sweet pickle peppers. This is banana pepper and a jalapeno pepper. These right here are Anaheim peppers. I grew those last year and I really like them because I can either make dice green chilies with them or I can make um, Rotel like tomatoes with them as well. And on the back side, I have paprika peppers. My goal this year is to make paprika with them. So we'll see how that goes. And then I also have some lettuce here that's bolted. I usually take this out, but I don't have extra anything I need to put in there at the moment. So I'm going to try to save seed from this lettuce this year. And then I've got some eggplants that are struggling. I'll talk to you about that when we get closer to my other eggplants flea beetles have been crazy. But this area here, I will be preparing soon to get some fall crops into this particular raised bed. So let's go back around and I want to show you from the other direction, the tomatoes that I have growing in straw bales. This is the first year that I've done straw bale gardening. Complete test, but so far I am super proud of the results. It's been so good. And really besides the initial conditioning of the bales, it's been very hands-off. Just making sure that I conditioned them from the beginning and then planting them. I haven't had to do any weeding and the disease has been nearly non-existent. There has been some, but I think it's because the plants, the tomatoes that were right beside them, you can see these are the ones in the cages and we have the straw bales over here. I think the disease actually came from the ones in the cages and then spread over there. So I did have some disease issues, but for the most part, um, it's really been almost hands off. So let's go over and take a little closer look at the tomatoes and the melons I have growing in the straw bales. As you can see, this has become a little bit of a jungle here. I have two rows of okra planted here. I've never had my okra fill out so much. Usually it's kind of tall and maybe more spindly. I added compost to that area, so maybe that's why they're doing so well. So as a result, I don't have as good of a walkway here, but you can kind of see just how these tomatoes and the straw bales are doing. I have trimmed out some of that diseased plants that I mentioned before. I have, I believe, an Amish paste right here, and then all of these that you see are ripe. Those are all Juliet, kind of a grape sized tomato you can do so many things with. I usually process them in sauce, but they are really productive and produce in the heat of the summer. And then moving on here, I've got some more Amish paste up there, another Juliet up there. And then you can see that I have melons down here. I planted some kind of a melon in between two tomato plants in each straw bale. So I have watermelon and I have honeydew melon. They're growing both on this side, but they're also, as you saw before, they're growing through this cattle panel to the tomato cages on the other side. So one thing I have done this year is I've tied these tomato plants up to this cattle panel. They are anchored with T-post. I, I do not prune my tomato plants. I still haven't. I've just tied them up as they've grown. And so far it's done really, really well. We move on, you've got some more San Marzano tomatoes here, and then some Amish paste here. 
they don't typically love the heat so i'm not sure how much longer they're going to make it but i have a lot of different varieties that i've got to choose from and moving on here another uh, shot of my okra i also have melons that are growing in between the okra it's kind of hard to see and since the okra has done so well i'm not sure that that has been the best for them this year because the okra has shaded out that area so I'm not sure how that will actually affect the yield of the watermelons and the cantaloupes that I planted through there. But that's what you've got there. And then I've got a row of corn. I've already harvested a couple of corn ears off of this. And they've grown pretty well. I've got another planting on the other side that you'll see. But that's pretty much what I've got here with the corn. Moving on from the corn here, behind me you'll see my new raised bed and it's actually kind of overgrown i would say this is where my roma tomatoes were planted my very best harvest but they are pretty much winding down now i'm not worried about making them look good or tying them up or anything like that because they're pretty much done i've already harvested probably over 60 pounds of roma tomatoes off of these here so i'm letting them die down until i get my full harvest and then i will take them out i'll probably add some more soil to it because the soil that i added to this raised bed has settled quite a bit so i'll add some more soil to it i'll probably plant a cover crop of buckwheat before planting broccoli in this place for my fall planting in september so that's what i've got planned for that raised bed behind me and then this one back here is pinto beans this is where i harvested my onions from my spring harvest i harvested them in early june which i know people harvest onions at different times depending on where they're at but i harvested mine in early june and then after i took them out i planted pinto beans they're not quite ready to harvest yet but i have high hopes for them because they're doing really well in this raised bed soil here moving on i've got four raised beds here behind me so i will show you what i've got going on in those this raised bed was where you may have seen garlic the last time we talked i'm not sure if i'd completely harvested all the garlic then but i planted bell peppers in between my garlic and you can already see it's doing really well i've already harvested a whole lot of bell peppers and then on each side of the bell peppers i have I think those are red kidney beans. I haven't ever had a great crop of those yet, but I keep trying them because we eat so many. So that's what's on either side of the bell peppers. I also have jalapeno peppers on the end. And then this is a second planting of Roma tomatoes. This is definitely a trial for me because tomatoes don't like to set fruit when the weather is above 90 degrees Fahrenheit. It's when I usually lose a lot of my tomato fruiting and it's definitely above that now. But so far, I mean, I do see flowers and there is some fruit there. My goal was to have a second set of Roma tomatoes because I do so much canning. And before the Roma tomatoes, I harvested peas from this crop or from this area. I had peas that harvested late May and then I ended up, I ended up planting the Roma tomatoes, I think in early June. So this is definitely a late planting for me when we can usually plant tomatoes in early April. So I'm testing that out. We'll see if the weather actually causes a problem or not. Here I've got a planting of Roma tomatoes. This is an early planting, but they just didn't do as well. I think part of it maybe was the soil fertility. They just weren't all that great. They've still produced a little bit for me. This is carrots that I've let go to flower because I'm going to save the seed for the carrots. They looked beautiful when they were all white, but now they're kind of scraggly looking. But I'll get those seeds harvested and get those out of here. This bed was where I planted potatoes and I harvested potatoes on that side. I planted cabbage on this side. Not all of them survived, as you see a couple of bare spots there. And even the ones that did survive, they didn't do all that great. This one is okay. I'll probably be harvesting these pretty soon. I've got another planting of cabbage that I will plant in the fall in a different location. But for, for the most part, this was kind of a disappointing cabbage harvest for me. But the potatoes that I planted in this raised bed did really, really well. They fought disease off better than the other ones did that I planted in my regular ground. And the yield wasn't as high as I expected considering how well they grew, but 
it was really easy to plant them in the raised bed and I may, as I add more and more raised beds to my garden, just because I found raised beds to be so much more productive for me, I may end up switching my potatoes to more of a raised bed planting because they ended up doing so, so well. So that was one side of my garden and then the middle set of raised beds. So now let's take a look at the other side of the garden. Walking through here, I've got blackberries and raspberries that have already fruited and they're done for the year. I'll eventually need to come and clear those out. This raised bed here is empty. I did just plant buckwheat because I took out all my squash and zucchini. They were being overrun with squash bugs and squash vine borer, so I just took those out. And I'm trying to prepare this area both with the buckwheat planting and with extra layer of compost, you can see, for something that I will plant for a fall, gar fall garden. I think maybe cabbage will go here, but I haven't quite decided. You can see in the background here what looks like a bunch of brush. That's actually a perennial insectary seed mix that I bought from Southern Exposure. I have this area that tends to get very weedy. It still kind of is, honestly. But I wanted to grow something that would attract pollinators. And so far it's worked really well. And then here you see my arch trellis. I'm gonna give you a better shot of this on the other side. But on this side, I have some Blue Lake pole beans growing and they haven't fruited yet. They haven't started bearing yet. A lot of times they don't bear in the heat of the summer for me. They usually wait until August. I also have a little cantaloupe growing which may or may not do well. <laughs> and then over here in the middle, I've got oregano, black-eyed Susan, and then there's a sunflower that's already past its prime. I let those seeds drop and let them feed the birds and all of that. And usually I get volunteer sunflowers every year from that. And then on this side, I'm growing loofah. This is the first time that I've ever grown loofah before. So we'll see how that goes. This particular bed, this has been a struggle because I took out my beets and then I planted pie pumpkins. And oh my goodness, Obviously we have had a drought and I guess the drip irrigation hasn't been enough for it, but I've had several of my pie pumpkins die like that. I'm guessing, I'm guessing it's just from the heat and the drought, but I'll have to replant. I have more time to do that, but that's my goal is to have pie pumpkins in this garden bed. See, I told you I didn't prepare for this. I would have probably taken it out <laughs> if I knew that it was wilted like that, but I still have time to replant. So that's what I will be doing. Behind me is my A-frame trellis, which is my favorite feature in my garden. But what you see before you get to the A-frame trellis, I have okra on this side and also on this side. And then beside the okra, I have red beans, which again, I keep trying red beans because we eat chili and I wanna grow enough beans for chili. But that's what I've got growing here. And then in the middle here, I just harvested potatoes. I took those potatoes out, the red beans were kind of taken over that area, but that was another way that I made extra room in this area for extra crops. So now that I've shown you what's in here, let's go and explore what's on and underneath the A-frame trellis. Just wanted to give you kind of a, a side view of the pole beans that are growing up this A-frame trellis completely covered. I don't know that I've ever had them covered so well here. But on the left side, as we go here, um, I have carrots that I probably need to harvest pretty soon, but when I've tested them, they haven't been as big as I had hoped. And on the right side, I harvested celery, but I ended up cutting the celery at soil level and not digging it up. And look, it's already started to regrow. So isn't that cool? I've got all those celery plants started to regrow in the middle of July when the temperatures are really, really hot. But I have to tell you, Underneath this A-frame trellis, underneath all of these leaves, it is significantly cooler. <laughs> Just to have this shade, really, really cool. But I will say, again, these Blue Lake beans just don't produce for me in the heat. The first time that happened, I was like, oh my goodness, what happened to my beans? I don't know what I'm going to do. But I realized that they don't produce in the heat where I'm at. And what they'll do instead is they'll just kind of hang out here until usually August and September and that's when I get the bulk of my green bean planting or harvest and I love that because right now I'm so busy harvesting and processing tomatoes that I really don't have time to mess with green beans right now so waiting to be able to do that and to do all of my green bean canning till August and September is actually a really good thing for me so I love just watching and 
observing and enjoying the beauty of the green beans here without really having to do much harvesting or canning. It's hot out here, can you tell? I'm already getting very sweaty. Okay, what I wanna show you now as I'm moving through this A-frame trellis is I actually have two trellises here. If you're interested in the plans on how we built this A-frame trellis, I'm gonna list the uh, way to get those plans for free on my website. But this one in particular, I planted all pole blue lake beans because I found them to be very productive for me and very reliable for me. Usually I plant both of them with uh, blue lake pole beans but this year I decided I really usually have more green beans than we eat so I devoted this second trellis to pole black beans and I just harvested these this week ended up canning nine pints of black beans I know a lot of people just save them for dry use and that's totally okay but I wanted to can them because that's how we use them but because I was able to pick them before they reach the full drying out, I will be able to take down this whole section of my black bean planting and replant something. So I'm going to be replanting pinto beans. They're technically a bush bean, but every time I've planted them, they've sent up their vines and they've tried to climb. So I'm just gonna test it and see how they do here. One thing that you may notice in my garden and particularly in my bean planting is how riddled my beans are with insect damage. You can see it's pretty bad and I was actually not really sure what the problem was because I couldn't see any Japanese bean beetles are usually the culprit for most people. I couldn't find anything. But then when I was picking my black beans last week, I saw a little bitty beetle and I used an app on my phone, I think it's called Picture Insect, and found out it's called a bean leaf beetle, which completely makes sense because it's obliterating my bean leaves. And that's why they look like a shotgun went through them because they're really bad. But I don't think I'm gonna do anything about it. From what I, I can read, Mainly the organic methods that you use to combat these beetles are, are broad spectrum organic methods like pyrethrin, spinosad, even neem. And I have such a big population of beneficial insects in my garden. I don't want to threaten them. So at this point, honestly, having to, to harvest 10 pounds that equaled nine, nine pints of black beans that will last our family all year from this one black bean planting, I'm happy with. And my blue lake beans are a lot healthier right now. Every year, even though they look bad, they end up producing really well. So at this point, I don't think I'm gonna do anything about it. The, the, the crop that I'm more concerned about is my pinto beans and my red beans, the bush beans. They tend to be a little bit more affected by it. So I may look at other methods next year like kale and clay. I know a lot of people use that to deter the, the bean beetles. So I may try that next year, but I don't think I'm gonna worry any with it this year. As we move on, you can see I have another planting of corn right beside the bean trellis behind me. And then beside that, I have sweet potatoes. Last year I harvested 90 pounds of sweet potatoes in an area equal to what you see here we don't eat that many sweet potatoes <laughs> and I don't know if we're going to harvest 90 pounds again this year but if we don't that's okay the little makeshift trellis you see here that's what I had peas climbing on and this was another succession planting that I did I harvested my shelling peas in the end of May and I actually planted my sweet potatoes beside them in the middle of May so they grew together for a little while and then I harvested my peas took them out and then now my sweet potatoes are climbing in that same area and this I went ahead and left the fence in place so that the sweet potato vines could have something to climb they don't have to but they will grow everywhere and they'll go everywhere in my garden so I kind of wanted just a little extra space where I could give them somewhere else to crawl while they were growing as we move on here, I have a row of, actually two rows of tomatoes behind me. These are actually not doing as well as the other plantings of tomatoes. This particular garden space just hasn't been as productive in general, but it's okay. I mean, it's not horrible. Obviously I'm still harvesting. You can see that there are quite a few tomatoes that are ready to harvest here. They're just not 
producing at the volume that the other ones are, but I'm still measuring it. I am weighing every harvest that I get so that I can see what soil does better, what location does better. If I can figure out how to get more harvest from the same space, that's what I'm testing because I always want to compare everything that I've got. To me, it's so much fun to test, to measure, to see what works well, what I can do to improve for next season. And so far as I've made those little tweaks every year, it seems like, I mean, barring the terrible insect infestation that I didn't prepare for or weather issues, things like that that I can't control, overall, the more that I'm able to tweak, the more that I'm able to learn, the better my garden harvest has been year after year. Okay, so we have a couple more places I want to show you before we complete the garden tour. All right, besides those tomato plants that I showed you here, this is my row of black-eyed peas. Black-eyed peas are a staple in my garden. I actually grew them for the first time because I heard they grow well in Arkansas. Hadn't really ever tasted them, but turns out I like them. They are just starting to produce pods. They're not quite ready to harvest yet, but I take my black-eyed peas and I can them and we eat them year round. And then as you look more at the panorama of the garden here, I've got a bed there that's very weedy at the moment, but that's where my strawberry harvest came from, most of it. I also have some strawberries over there you saw earlier with the zinnias and the tomatoes, have a bunch of strawberries over there, but most of them I think came from that bed. And so that's what I've got over there. And then the last thing I wanted to show you here is the raised bed that I created this year with the self-watering raised bed that Good Ideas sent me. They are my podcast sponsor and they wanted me to try out what they have. I've got three peppers that you can see here and two eggplants at the back. And this is what I was showing you at the beginning. I don't know if they're gonna make it. They are not doing well. They have been riddled with the flea beetle from the very beginning. But I'm not, I'm not all that upset, honestly, because we got enough eggplants before they started looking like that. We already had two meals and I already dehydrated a quart worth of uh, eggplant slices for eggplant parmesan in the fall, in the winter. So I'm happy with it. Next year, I'm definitely going to cover the eggplants to prevent the flea beetle because obviously it does some major damage. But you can see how healthy these bell peppers are. And if you're interested more about the self-watering raised bed, these walls are hollow and you just open this and then you can put water in this and the water fills the walls of the raised bed. And so that way I don't have to have any kind of drip irrigation or anything like that. I just fill the walls and so far I haven't had to do any supplemental irrigation of this area so far. I hope you've enjoyed my garden tour for the middle of July 2020. I hope that this encourages you that you can make a productive garden out of whatever space that you have, whether you grow in the ground like I do, or grow in raised beds like I do, or you do a little bit of a combination of both. Also, I hope that some of the things that I've shared with you today on succession planting has given you some ideas of how you can make the most use of the space that you have. And maybe after seeing how my plants aren't perfect and how sometimes the insects really do get to them, but that's okay, that will encourage you to have an organic garden and to pursue organic methods because I believe above all in my garden, that's what I want. I want an organic garden because this is proof and I can show you the dozens of canning jars in my kitchen right now that you can have an organic garden that is productive too. It may not be perfect, it may not be everything that you want, but it's definitely possible. So I hope you've enjoyed coming along today and I hope that you will subscribe for future garden videos and how-tos in the future on this channel. Thank you so much for watching today.